I'm Jack Carver and you're watching Inside Media. Now on an earlier episode, we showed you how to make a fig rig on a budget. But some of you emailed us in and said that it wasn't that comfortable on a longer shoot. So Shane decided to try something else to make your shot steady. Hi, welcome to Lana Budget, and today we're going to build a shoulder mount. The things you'll need are a length of 3 quarter inch PVC pipe, a length of insulation foam, a drill, a heat gun, a measuring tape, a hacksaw, a drill bit set, an electric plate, four 32 by 2 inch machine screws, a quarter inch fly nut, and a pencil. First, measure out where you want the camera to sit, and then measure 6 inches on the other side for your shoulder support. After remeasure where you'd like your shoulder support and your handles to be, and proceed with the heat gun. Always be cautious when using the heat gun. Pan back and forth with the heat gun to evenly melt the PVC, and never stay in one spot for too long. After your PVC is cooled for a bit, cut off the uneven ends for your hand grips. Then bend the shoulder side of the mount to the desired length for your shoulder. For your hand grips, make a decent length so you can grip at different heights. Now it's time to make your marks for the plate. Screw a hole into the four corners of the plate to attach the plate to the PVC using the 32 by 2 inch machine screws. Lastly, make a quarter inch hole for the camera mount and attach the plate to the PVC using the four machine screws and the nuts. For the camera mount, put a bolt through the hole and attach the bolt using a fly nut. For extra comfort, use the insulation foam around the PVC. Our insulation foam came with removable sticky edges. And that's it! Attach your camera and test out your brand new shoulder mount. Well, that's it for this episode of On a Budget. I uh, hope you guys had a lot of fun building your shoulder mounts today. Uh, these things work really well with GoPros and DSLRs, but you could also throw a point and shoot camera on that. Um, until next time, I'm Shane Lynch and see you later. That looks pretty comfortable for a camera rig. Anyway, earlier on the show we talked to James Lottie about IMAX filmmaking, but what about the audio side of things? For that we talked to Peter Tilly. The sound editing of a film is, is basically, I, I like to call it the art direction for your ear, which is that all the elements of the sound, uh, include dialogue, but also all the backgrounds, all the movements that the characters make, all the tools they use, the environment, has to work with the kind of the emotional and the dramatic context that the film is, is in. I think the principal difference between IMAX and uh, television and theatrical film is that the, uh, the d visual detail in IMAX is extreme. If uh, your eye is so 
engaged with, with the image, that the sense of the sound and the presence in the sound and the emphasis that the sound can give to any particular scene seems to drop away. So it demands a level of detail and a level of richness. You have to commit yourself to the soundtrack more than, than you would in a commercial or a television uh, show. Everything is done in layers. You're listening to the voice, the music is here. Now we want to hear the forest. Now we want to hear the water running, we're just crossing the bridge. And you add those elements. So everything is in layers that accumulate and then those layers diminish. And, and it's the automation that allows you to do that. And this, this has got uh, 24 Fraser. This is quite, uh, it's an old war horse board. It's, it's nothing to write home about. But it, it serves us because it has a good uh, Ethernet relationship with the, with the, se the session. It, it toggles through. I mean, this thing can run, you know, hundreds of tracks. And then that's how you, you get. You set one sound. This is your principal sound. And you keep building a sound image. Because your brain takes each level that you give it it has an enormous sort of thirst for, for data and perception because it's always trying to match you into reality. Are you coming too close to me? Are you, gonna, are you a threat? Are you a friend? So it's reading the situation in an enormous amount. And so you give it more data. That's why we noticed we, IMAX did 3D like 1989. We were doing 3D. And that's what we realized is that the we could make sounds and sounds environments work because the brain was convinced that that was a real space, that, that, was, that this was the match. So that move to different playback formats going into multiple speakers, that is a big, that's a big deal. I think it's important that the, uh, the revolution in digital media be a complete revolution not just a visual one. It should go the whole dimension. The idea of capturing good sound and, and the depth it can bring to what you do is really an important thing. That's about it for today. Again, if you'd like to see more behind the scenes footage, make sure you head to www.loyalisttv.com slash inside media and check out our Facebook page. As always, I'm Jack Carver and you just watched Inside Media. I'm Jack Carver and you're watching Inside Media. Now, on another, on an earlier episode, we showed you. <laughs> Oftentimes, their storytelling and their Shane decided to try something else that'll make a shot steady on a longer shoot on a budget. Yep, totally forgot. Okay, <laughs> Mitch Berman is the producer slash director. Okay. Mitch Berman is a produ is a <laughs> sorry producer. Mitch Berman is a produ <laughs> a producer. That wraps things up here for <laughs> that wraps. I again, if you'd like to see anything you saw today on the show, uh, rawr, 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 make sure you check out us on Facebook. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I just, I just came out of nowhere. I was trying to remember. That wraps things up for us in here. That's Inside Media in your ear. Tune in next time for more cool things about behind the scenes and budget things. What?